All right, thank, thanks for staying with us. So you were saying that, you know, at the point of making that decision and when it comes to career, the young girl is probably maybe too young, you know, to... Just too young. Yeah. They don't have the exposure to make that call. And they're trying to determine what their life is going to be in the next 20, 30 years. So I think you have to be kind to yourself. So it's okay to take what you have. Then as you evolve, you know, you get to know more as a journey, you decide to make your choices. A good way to look at this, what are you now passionate about? What are you skilled? What do you have a tendency to tilt towards? Because that's how I found myself doing what I used to do. Or what I'm doing now. I wasn't a salesperson. I wasn't in management. I actually started as an engineer. Mm -hmm. But I ran a project that was so successful and so on. The, the, the department or so I ran the project for was so impressed and told me, you know what, you know my customers more than me, why don't you come work for me as wow. a salesperson? And I said, no way, I can't do sales. Like, Lee, I'm an engineer, I'm very techy. Like, what do, you, what do you think sales is? It's what you've just done. You know how to connect with people, you know how mm -hmm. to communicate, then that's how you build trust. Then after that, you know, every other thing falls in place. So I think just be kind. Like, let's be kind to this kid. So was the sales know. thing before all the Harvard? Because I knew Harvard yeah, the business sales school, was that, that, that's, Yale business school. It was all before. Actually, it's when so I did sales, sales I got into you. management oh, okay. and my career. Started. So at the time I started my career, I was going to be an engineer and probably some technical officers, some techie business. I didn't see anything about sales coming. Mm. But it's so. interesting that you actually mentioned the fact that you're too young, because I feel that we have a trend in this country where people finish their degree, mm -hmm. they go and do a master's, and I'm like, you don't even know what you want to do. So why do... Be um, in a hurry. Exactly, uh, do a master's at that point. And when you were speaking, in fact, I, I just remember, it's funny, we're talking about career, and I didn't remember my own story. I went into university to study electronic engineering, yeah. and my first, my very first class, I was like, whoops. <laughs> yeah, I, love, I, love, I love maths, I love physics, but I love chemistry. For me. But it was like the minute I was hit with electronics, I was like, this has nothing to do with physics, chemistry, or <laughs> like. So I called my mother and I said, no, we're not. I can't do this. Do says, but you must. And then, like you said, I was passionate about entertainment and all of that. So I studied yes. PR and marketing. Yeah. And then when it came to career. I ended up back where I started in the customer space. So it really does happen to you. It does, because I, mm -hmm. you know, we can go on and on. I, because my parents wanted me to study medicine. And when you know the science, it's like, go for medicine. I'm like, I don't want to do medicine. So I decided that I want to do engineering. But even engineering, it wasn't like easy. Like my first yeah. physics test, I got zero. Clean. Wow. It was zero. And at that point, the physics teacher told me to really think about if I wanted to do science. <laughs> so, you tend to see you tilt towards something or your skill set. You know, that's why I say pay attention. What do people mm. say you're good at? What do people tell you do so easily, but you think that, ah, oh, no, that's not, there's nothing in it. You know, pay attention. What do you love? What would you do for free? Mm. You spend sleepless nights just doing it. Even mm. in the office, you could be playing a role, but you find that you, you volunteer for some other thing. You, know, you do it excellently. You, you do well. excellently where you put a lot of passion, you study, you research, even probably more than the job you're being paid for. Mm -hmm. So just be more aware. So are, the, are there chances that you could be passionate about more than one thing, right? And that's the first question. Then the second one is, does your personality influence your career choice? Because I, for instance, I'm an introvert. Yeah. in an entertainment industry, which is like a really, really loud industry. Yeah. I love what I do. But the, the going about it is yeah. like, sometimes I'm like, am I in the right place? But I love what I do. <laughs> so does your personality influence your career? I think your personality enhances. So it could, the, your, the strengths of your personality could play. Mm -hmm. Like for a salesperson, being an extrovert is a big thing, literally. You are the, you know, like the life of the party. Eh? The clients want you. But now when it's time to do maybe detailed work, routine work, you probably will shy away. But a more introverted person can keep still and do the routine, you know, mm -hmm. to put the dog documents together, the presentation together. So what I've realized is that you play to your strength. Doesn't mean an extra, an introvert cannot be a salesperson. He will play to his strength. So he knows when there's a crowd, that will not work for him. But if it makes the audience smaller, he will play to his strength. So he okay. can connect. So yes, just be aware of what your personality brings to the table. So Uzi was talking about work-life -life balance earlier yeah. on and saying that it's, it's impossible for you to have it all. But our court disagrees, <laughs> you know. What, what's your take on that? First of all, I, I think work-life balance is, for me, I, I don't know if it exists. I don't think it really, I have to be very true to myself. I don't think it really exists. But I think what really is important to me is what Francis Frey says. So Francis Frey is a prophet yeah, from yeah. Harvard. Dare to be bad. You can't be good at everything. 
but choose the things you'll be bad at. And then choose the things that are empowering to then you'll be good at it. Mm -hmm. So we talk about career, we talk about marriage, we talk about your, you know, your family life. So I could decide, and I, and I think it's also in phases. So you see it's a journey. Yeah. So there's a phase in my Where career. Where you focused on. It was all about the travels. Like I was really trying to hit it. I'm aiming for that. But of course I had to pay the price in all kinds of ways. My daughter was closer to the nanny than me, you know. Yeah. Uh, my son, like, you know, you, that was the price I was paying. But it got to a phase that like, no, I'm stepping back. No, we're not doing this. We're giving them the attention now. They are pirates. I'm like, I show up for every play. I volunteer in your class. You know, they want some, mm. te a teacher wants some mom to read this. Me, you know, I'll, oh, I'll do yeah. whatever it takes to, to compensate. And that's why it's good in a marriage to have that discussion because there's a phase now, my husband would like to have me more, but he can have me, you know, as much mm -hmm. so, he would like to, okay. you know. All right, so let's say that I've made the wrong choice. Yeah. Young, naive, and all of that, and I started a career, and now I'm feeling bored. I don't know what to do. I'm feeling stuck. What do I need to do to transcend beyond where? Because you mentioned something about passion earlier. Yeah. That the best way to also go is, you know, your passion. So now I've identified my passion. How do I now start to build? Because it's, sometimes it's completely extreme. Yeah. You know where you are and where you want to go to. So mm -hmm. how do I start to build? Okay, some say do the cold turkey. You just shut it one day. Some people do that, resign and go stay at home. And the next thing you see that the girl is doing poetry. You know, this is some <laughs> lady that was a lawyer. Wow. But I, I like the transitional approach. So I like to, I'm not aware that I'm in the wrong place. I don't want to do this. But I'll show up because they're paying me. You know, nine to five, I'll show up. Mm -hmm. Then I start to make the plan. You know, I do my research, certifications. I'm studying at night. I'm trying to network towards the industry I want to find myself, so I can build relations, understand how the, the, the industry works. Then you make a transitional move. I think then it's easier, because even when I show up, I say I want to intern. I don't want to intend that I'm black. I actually know something about your sector or your industry. But for some people, they feel like, what's the use? We do cold turkey, you know? So if that works for you, especially if you saved up a lot of money, maybe you do cold yeah, turkey. Yeah, I was just going to say this. Because if you're living that 95 you know world with money, done. Yeah, you can't take those choices. I really wanted to talk about um, STEM. Yeah. Because that's the part of your um, profile that yes. really resonated with me. I think. Um, and especially from the women point of view, there's a lot of focus. So, so STEM is science, technology, engineering, and maths. So the importance of the girl child. And so what inspired you to move in that direction? Because I mean, I know you're an engineer, but it's a complete shift. And you were yeah. talking about your daughter. So maybe share yeah. something like that with us. So my daughter is a huge inspiration for what I do. Uh, because I actually got into STEM because I love the challenge. I just had a lady telling my mother that it was so difficult to study engineering. And like people are failing, like there are 10 people. I'm like, that's the one I want to do. Like wow. it's difficult there. That's the one I want to go for. But I think having been in that industry, you see very few women. You know, you just realized Two days ago, when someone asked me, there was the only female in my office. This is me, so passionate about STEM. Oh. <laughs> I'm like the only female in my office. So my daughter, for me, becomes symbolic because she is my younger self. I, I see her as my younger self. And I want to give my younger self all the other things I would have given myself if I was more aware. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's important that we, we don't um, downplay or we don't let women sell themselves short because of our own cultural practices or because of, you know, just our natural patriarchy as a nation, you know. There's this whole thing about, ah, it's too hard, don't do it. You're a girl, just do something quickly and come and marry, you know. Why are you trying yes. to spend six years in engineering? Mm -hmm. And they say, can you climb a mass? This is for men, you know, those smart, intelligent boys, can you compete with them? And we found out that's all false. STEM is all about this, you know, is your ability you to solve your problems. Mind. As as you us through quickly what the Women and Career Initiative is about. So Women and Career is all about supporting women to grow their careers. We give them tools, resources, whatever it is, mentoring. We give them all this to help them grow their careers because we think it's really important for women to start defining their purpose yeah. if they choose to buy their careers. And we also like to encourage young girls to start one. Because sometimes it's just information. Probably I would never have studied industrial chemistry if someone around me just believed that I could be an engineer. Because mm -hmm. that's the only reason I, I went to industrial chemistry. Yeah. I just thought, oh, everybody's telling me so hard. Do I think I'm too smart that I'm going to pass this thing? So just change it. Right, you know, I'm going to ask you um, this question. I think it's very important to me. Is there anything like the perfect career? You know, like you have a good job and you love what you do, you're yeah. earning well in it, and everything is just all around rosy. 
Is there anything like that? I think for me, the perfect car is your definition. What's perfect for you? Because I remember I was flying down from something I went to do. I landed at the airport like 12 midnight, you know, had this very hard day, couldn't even get a taxi to take me home. But I was happy. Mm -hmm. I was happy. I was fulfilled doing it. Because what I went to do was what makes me happy. Awesome. And for me, that was the perfect career. But I'm stuck in the airport at midnight, trying right. to find my way home. You know, right. My kids are all calling, when are you coming back, mom? <laughs> but I was happy. So I think it's your definition. That's why I'm trying to say most women should, you know, let's be more self-aware. What's your definition of success? What is it? So what I get from you right now is oh. if it makes you fulfilled and happy. Yeah. You are feeling very fulfilled. And you will do it for free. You are in the right? perfect. Yeah. We are in the perfect career. I, I love what I <laughs> do. I love what I do. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for coming. We would love to have you again. I yeah. probably would like to visit, you know, any of your events I when you're having. That. that would really be I nice for us to watch. I'll probably go and learn some things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So our next guest, Yetunde yeah. Bankoli Bernard, joins us right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.